Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Akron Buzz. Our guest in the studio, Mark Williamson, Manager of Marketing and Communications at the Akron Public Schools. And thank you for taking the time to be with us. Sure. I think our discussion today will be certainly useful for any parents anywhere, whether in the Akron Public Schools or not. And you were telling me earlier some, some certainly alarming numbers that I want to ask you about right away, and that is the number of students in the Akron Public Schools that might be homeless. And tell us a little bit about this, just for community awareness. That just struck me. Uh, you were everyone. telling me about this. Yeah. And, and, and what can be done, or what is the school system doing? It, it well, it's a this. federal program, and we have a, we have a whole department in our, our main office downtown that's uh, called Project Rise. These, these people are wonderful. And their whole mission is to help support families that experience homelessness during the school year. And every year, we're, we're sort of climbing every year, and we're, we're pretty close to about 2,000 last few years each year. 2,000 students in the Akron Public Schools at any given time mm -hmm. are homeless. Right, and we have 20,000 enrolled, 21,000. So that's 10% wow. of our enrollment. Um, and so these, these children come to school, and the last thing they're really thinking about is learning. Sure. Quite honestly. And so our job is to not just, not just to educate them and teach them, but we also support them and their families with food, with shelter. We, we uh, Project Rise folks, they work together. They collect goods, they collect services, they collect, um, they go out into the community, they, they interface with every nonprofit, with every charitable organization out there to raise as much capital to help with housing so that these families have as soft a landing as possible as you as you could possibly have wow. and they have some wonderful stories by the way i mean if you want to have somebody on the show <laughs> that's really interesting uh, i can i'll help you absolutely this, shana carino is fabulous It'd be really great stories do you ever get a little uh frustrated with the fact that the media calls you when they and they want you to talk about the bad news and there's a lot of great things going on in the Akron yeah. Public Schools. And could we give you an opportunity to tell us the great things going on? Give us a summary of some, give us some really great things. Because people go, well, look at these, these state rankings and mm -hmm. the grades and this, that, and the other. That's what everybody wants to focus on. There's good things right. happening. Well, when I was in news, we used to say we don't cover planes that land, right? <laughs> I mean, but uh, the, the, well, the state report card, um, I, I'm going to not get into the politics of it because it doesn't right. really matter. And no matter what we say, a lot of folks feel like we're just making excuses. But, you know, we have a community of, of people that use our public schools. And, you know, we're the end user. You take, you know, we have 47 schools. Wow. And you take Akron and you put them in 47 boxes in the course of a day. And if 20,000 kids, things happen, things go wrong, things go right. But you have media people that are sitting there waiting every day for anything that happens at a school. And I'll use an example, and I'm just gonna be honest about this, the student in green that, that, that didn't get the lunch that he wanted, and it turned into a news story. <laughs> like when I was a kid, and I hate to say that when I was a kid, when I was a kid, if I didn't get my lunch, nobody cared. You'll I get mean, who nothing cares? and like he, it. Yeah, it's just the way. But he got a lunch, he didn't just get the lunch that he, that he wanted because his family was in arrears, $9. And I'm not gonna even judge what was right or wrong about this, it's not news. Right. When a, when, a, when a child doesn't get a lunch, she's not going to die. She's not going <laughs> to starve. But, but Channel 8 does the story, and, sure. and the headline makes it sound like they, they were starving. They're their starving kids. kids in green. And it turns in, it's all over the country. And the people in green that do my job are like, oh, my God. I mean, what, happened? what just happened here? So, so we, it is frustrating for us, and we have, a, we have a lot of really positive stories. If you have 20,000 students, about 93% of our kids do really well. Sure. We've got about 7% of our students who really struggle. They might be homeless. They might be developmentally disabled. They might have criminal backgrounds. They might have no parents. They might have nobody. We had a valedictorian several years ago from Akron Early College High School, which is a really great school. These kids get a college two-year degree right. and a diploma from high school all at one time. And they're on the campus of the University of Akron. She was homeless. She lived in her car. Her parents said, see you later. Huh. She raised herself in her senior year, and she was the smart. I mean, this kid was brilliant. And, you know, I, I was just, I was in tears when I heard the story. So we have children like that that, that, that don't have, they have nobody. And uh, so schools, they're a safe place. 
When I was a kid, school scared me and home was my safe place, right? <laughs> it isn't like that for all the children today. So, so when you take our state report card, I'm sorry, it's taking me so long no. to get to the point. Or what do you have, like five minutes for the show? Oh, we got, for you, we have all day. You have six? Uh, yeah, okay. absolutely. We'll um, give you an extra minute. But the state report card, the, 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 the tests change every year. The standards change every year. And if any business was like ours and had to have new rules and regulations every three or four months or every six months, twice a year, once a year even, they you, wouldn't make any money. You drowned in Yeah, you drowned, right. But we have, we're expected to jump and jump through a lot of hoops and do what we're, you know. Uh, and we have something called MAP testing, which is an alternative. It's a nationwide test that our kids take. We can't use that to tell people how good we are. Our MAP testing has been really good. It's a percentile. The kids are ranked nationally. And, and we've climbed up to, into the 73rd, 74th percentile nationally, which for a public school is pretty good. But if you look at Ohio's test, tests and those scores, we get a D. Most urban public schools get Ds, some get Fs. Wow. We don't look at that as a, and it's not because the grade is bad, but in the middle, if you look at everything in there, we're actually improving in a lot of areas. It doesn't come out in that one letter grade that we get. That's frustrating. I, I heard you on the radio the other day talking about this, so I know that you can tell this story. And any of us that have kids, and even certainly those who don't, you just schools are a part of our community, whether yeah, you have kids or not. Sure. We are all concerned about security in the schools and the mental health of this generation. Mm -hmm. And there's a story at North High School about the, uh, what you called everybody working at perfectly in sync to really identify a problem and to protect students and to make school a safe place. Tell us about this. Well, we have student resource officers in our buildings. They're Akron police officers that we employ, and this is their job. And they, and we have our own security people, you know, like a lot of guys with no necks and really tight t-shirts that you just wouldn't want to mess with. But you know what? It works because these, these men and women that do these security jobs along with the police interact with these students and they get to be close to the kids and they hear things before they happen. Right. We stop, they stop a lot of things that might have happened before they even get started because they hear a rumor. And we teach our students and their families, if you hear anything, tell us. I don't care how ridiculous it sounds, just let us know. So our police officers really have their, and security people have their ears to the ground. And we had a, a, a police officer, resource officer at one of our high schools, um, who had, who had heard a rumor and he, he kind of, he didn't dismiss it, but he, he wasn't able to really put anything onto it. And then one morning he just had a feeling because police are like this. He had an instinct and he, he went up to a third floor storage room, which he knows the rooms that are unoccupied are the ones that, where the most trouble goes on because sure. they're actually occupied. And he opened the door and there was a 19 year old student facing him with a loaded gun. And he, he got this student to drop the gun, you know, because the police are good at that, right? And you can't have teachers doing that work, right? So we're grateful for their help in the buildings. You cannot arm teachers. This is not a good idea. That's, a whole, that's getting into the politics yeah, of it. it. We don't, the police, in this sure case not. and in all these cases, need to be in the schools, and they do a great job of protecting students. They're wonderful. Students. And, 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 and the byproduct, too, is that children, students learn about police officers that they're real people, that they're nice people. Right, and yes. they want to help. So when they when these kids grow up and get older, they have a different view. You know, it doesn't work for everybody, but but I think for all the years that we've been doing this, way before I started working there, we we have years and years under our belt of 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 generations of kids who now I think look at police officers differently than they might have. Totally on a separate topic, the new buildings. Mm -hmm. How do they change the learning environment? Certainly you can imagine a, a huge impact, a positive. Uh, I, we were watching the uh, uh, Perkins Middle School come down mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. watching everybody discuss it on Facebook and right. online and sharing pictures of yeah. memories of their, you know, it's heartbreaking to watch your school come down, mm -hmm. but it's great for the school system to have new facilities. What kind of impact does this make? Well, it's a, it, it, the, the first impact is visually what it's done for our city. Uh, we have neighborhoods that had old buildings that were dark at night, you know, and now we have these bright new buildings with really good lighting, security cameras, um, and, the, and the buildings now, our average building age was 85 20 years ago. Wow. Now it's about nine. <laughs> so we, and we had buildings that it, that it might have cost $25,000, $30,000 a month to heat, maybe more. Sure. You know, 300,000 square feet, right? And so in some of the buildings. The new buildings, it's, it's, it's a fraction of that cost. And because of the way technology changes, 
they're able to handle the growth of, of digital technology. The old buildings, the infrastructure was not compatible with technology and it cost us a lot more money to wire those buildings and get them. Now we don't worry about it because the buildings are designed to handle all the new technology. Sure. It's in the environment is they're bright, they're comfortable, they're open, there's a lot of natural light in all of them. They're fun places to go into. And if you're talking about making school the safe place, certainly mm -hmm. to, easier to secure a building designed with security in mind. Well, that's and another, with, that's another sure. element, you're right. And we can lock all the doors like right now. And we do, very often, we call it safe school watch. We don't call it a lockdown. Um, if there is a nefarious looking person you know, walking through the neighborhood, which, which happens, or sure. police will call and say, there's somebody outside that's suspicious, or we're chasing somebody and we're gonna be by X school in three minutes. Lock the we doors. We lock everything, so nobody uses our school as an escape route. Wow. It's, and it's really, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's just another one of those things that we're able to do because of these buildings now that you can't get out and you can't get in. Well, we're out of time, but I certainly appreciate you coming in and enlightening our audience. And if we can be a, a platform to really help tell the, the, the good stories happening in the Akron Public Schools, I'm glad you could take the time well, to be with much. us. Mark Williamson from the Akron Public Schools has been our guest, and uh, we appreciate his time in joining us, and we appreciate you watching Akron Buzz. We'll see you on the next one. Thank you.